So hello, everybody. Um, we continue now with uh, Chapter 20, and we're going to spend considerable time on Chapter 20 and 21, as you can see in your syllabus. We're going to talk in Chapter 22. We're going to talk about options and uh, calls and puts, and uh, this is a really great topic and which and one which I enjoy. So um, what we're going to do, just to go through the learning objectives, I'm on Chapter 20 now. We're going to define terms like call option, put option, exercise uh, price, strike price, uh, exercise in the option, expiration date, American option, European option, in the money, at the money, and out of the money. Okay, we're going to learn how to compute the value of a call or a put option at expiration and go over the rights and obligations of the buyer of the option and the seller of the option. All right, we're going to understand, we're going to go through put call parity, and what put call parity is, is once you know the price of a call or put, you automatically know the price of the put or the call, you know, vice versa. Once you know one, you know the other, and we're going to use that to solve for the call premium, the put premium, and uh, the stock price, the strike price, or the dividend. So there'll be a lot of math in this chapter, and uh, it's a new thing for many people. But I think everyone will enjoy it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, stock price and how they and strike price and volatility, and how these influence the valuation of calls and puts. And look at arbitrage balance for option pricing. Once again, arbitrage is always a uh, an issue with regards to um, finance, and uh, we'll look at that. And actually, so what we'll do. Uh, you know, we'll highlight that, and uh, that'll be something we'll we'll be concerned about. All right. All right. So, a couple more things, and we'll learn why it's never a good idea or optimal to exercise an American call option early on a non-dividend paying stock. And this is real, real important. And we'll spend some weeks on, on uh, talking about this. And uh, so, you know, you, we should know about that. And when we meet again on Thursdays, we'll start going over this stuff. We'll explain the use of option modeling to value equity. And basically, uh, we'll look how corporate debt is tied into uh, valuation. Uh, of uh, of put options. All right, so just to uh, get started here, and as I usually will do, I'll do a 15-minute video, and tonight I'll probably do a couple 15-minute more, more videos, okay, uh, being that everyone's home today. So a financial option is a contract um, that gives the um, owner and the important word here is it's a, it's a contract, okay? Uh, it gives the owner the right, uh, but uh, but not the obligation. So you have rights uh, to purchase or sell an asset at a fixed price at some uh, future date. Now I want to make something clear. Um, you are you have rights, but not an obligation if you buy a call or a put. They're not saying that here. So an, an important idea and concept is that you have a right, but not the obligation, as long um, as you are um, buying um, a call or a put. If you sell or write a call or a put, then you have obligation and no rights, okay? So uh, there's four forms of contract. You can buy a call or a put, or you can sell a call or a put. For every buyer, there must be a seller, okay? Please get that through your head, right? It's a zero-sum game. If I want to buy a call, someone has to sell me a call. If I want to buy a put contract, someone has to sell me one, and vice versa, okay? It's like a house. If I want to buy a house, someone's got to be selling me a house, right? Same idea. Now, a call option is an option that gives its owner the right uh, to buy an asset, okay? So... You um you you go what you do is you're going long a call option, and it gives you the right to buy an underlying asset, 
and I'm going to highlight this and um, let me uh, make this a little clearer. I'm going to add a word here for you. Underlying every derivative contract has an underlying asset. Okay, so when we talk about derivatives, we're going to talk about um, contracts that have something underlying them. So a call option will have an underlying asset, asset and um, it gives you the right uh, to uh, buy or, or uh, uh, that underlying asset. Now, I want to make something else clear. Um, when, when you basically have a call option, you have to pay a premium on this call option, okay? So, with a call option, if you want to make money with a call option, what you have to do is um, buy the call option, and the only way you will make money is if the stock that I'm using stock as an example, but there are many other assets. If the underlying asset, as an example, is stock, if that has to go up, if that goes up, um, you will make money on the call option. Okay, so um, that's what a call option is. When you buy a call option, you make money. If the if you have a feeling the underlying will go up. Okay. And I'll put a note here. Make money if underlying increases in value and we'll talk more about that when we meet we'll talk more about that okay all right so all right now a put option is just the opposite this gives the owner the right to sell an asset okay so now with this it's just the opposite you make money if the price goes down okay with the put option you're betting that the price of the underlying asset will go down betting the price of underlying asset will decrease okay so as I said as I said for every buyer there's a seller so so far we have you can buy a call or you can buy a put okay now for every buyer there's got to be a, um, a writer and here's the guy who's selling or writing the contracts, okay? He is the seller of an option contract, has obligations, but no rights. Whoops. So let me just fix that. But no rights. If buyer wants to exercise and we'll talk more about exercise or or sell contract the seller must oblige the buyer of the contract so in other words the um, option writer um, has to uh, perform as obliged by the um, the um, buyer why does the option writer write contracts in the first place because as I may have mentioned earlier what happens is a person buys a contract a call or a put and they pay a premium they that premium is lost you never get that money back it's kind of like your car insurance every year you pay the premium after you pay the premium um, you hope you make money on the contract and why does the writer write it 
because the writer collects the premiums and he makes money if the contracts don't perform and he keeps the premiums, right? So let me write here. Makes money by collecting premiums. Okay, if the contract doesn't perform, he's happy. He's got all his premiums. Okay, I hope everyone's clear on that. If not, we'll talk about it Thursday, or you can email me in the intervening time. Okay, so um, when you ex when the buyer, when the uh, buyer or holder, so let me write here in parentheses, buyer um, of an option, the call or the put, enforces the agreement. And, uh, and buys or sells a share of stock, or uh, and I'll say, I'll say here, or underlying asset at the agreed upon price, which is called the strike price, okay, the writer must deliver, okay? So the um, buyer can exercise the option, and what we'll talk about later uh, is the um, buyer can also sell the option. And let me put a note here. Buyer can also sell the option. Okay, so... The strike or exercise price is the price at which an option holder will buy or sell a share of stock or asset, as I said, when the option is exercised. Okay, so when you buy that contract, you buy the contract at a specific strike price. Okay, buy at predetermined strike price. And being that this is a contract, the last date on which an option holder has the right to exercise the option is the expiration date and will expire. So the contract will expire. Okay? So if, you, if the contract expires and you don't exercise it or sell it, the guy who wrote it keeps the premiums and he's happy. He's made money on the premiums. Okay? So I hope everyone's clear about that. Uh, okay, so, um, all right. So there's a couple different types of options. And uh, the first one is called an American option. And an American option allows the holders to exercise the option at any date up to and including the expiration date. Okay, so you can exercise anytime you want. Exercise anytime you want but you can also sell it right as I said the European option uh, allows the holders to exercise the option only on the expiration date but I want to make something clear um, even though they can only exercise it on the expiration date they can still sell it um, but still sell anytime they want. So the names, uh, just to, uh, to be clear, the names American and European, European have nothing to do with the location. It's just historical names. So I'll highlight that, okay? Let me just highlight that. That's important to know. And we'll talk a lot more, and I'll make more videos on this later. Okay, so that's that's important. All right, so we're almost 15 minutes into this, and uh, I'll make another one uh, later, okay? So uh, we'll continue from this slide on. Um, talk to you later.